Okay, so the skimmer is this thing. This secondary playhead, this little red line that's following your mouse all over the damn place and probably making you crazy, switching what you're looking at in the viewer and jump into places you didn't intend. Uh, it's kind of unwieldy at first, but I'm here to tell you that it's actually your friend. And the first thing you should know about it is that there are, in fact, two types of skimming, in a way. There's like your regular vanilla flavor skimming that you're seeing here, and then there's a deeper level called clip skimming. And you're going to want to make sure that's turned on. So don't worry about what it is right now. Just know that it's very useful and you're going to want to have it enabled most of the time. So what's the point of this thing? Well, the skimmer is like a secondary playhead that gives you, I'd like to say, almost like x-ray vision and enables very quick and simple operations. Um, you might think of it as like your virtual point of attention or action. Anything you move it over, you're going to see. And that's why I say it's a little bit like x-ray vision, because this enables you to look through massive amounts of footage very quickly. And, for example, just run your skimmer over your footage, either uh, clips in the browser or a sequence, and you'll see that material. So there's no need to double-click things constantly or load them into a string-out sequence of some kind. So it's your point of action in that you can affect the clips you hover the skimmer over. So, for example, you find a clip in the browser, move the skimmer someplace else in the clip, you'll see that you have like these two playheads. You have your red skimmer and this white line here. But if you hit the space bar to play back, you'll see that you start playing back from where your skimmer was, not the white playhead. You stop, move the skimmer someplace else, and mark an in. You'll get an in point set where the skimmer was. Uh, same will apply to markers and same will apply to trimming clips in the timeline. So where you place the skimmer can make a big difference, which leads me to my tips for getting used to it. So first tip, if you're trying out Final Cut and you're used to using a Wacom tablet, is to not use that Wacom tablet, or however you pronounce that brand, I've never known. Um, at least not when you're learning. It's likely gonna get in your way until you get a proper handle on things. So use a mouse or a trackpad because it'll be easier to control and you won't be as likely to fly into a fit of rage about this stupid app you've decided to play with. Second tip is to know that you can disable it. So you won't want to work without it completely. You won't really be able to do everything that you need to do without it, but you will want to know how to control it. So you can toggle it on and off by hitting the S key. And the third tip is to remember that it's useful. It's your friend. Like I said, you can set markers, set your in and out points with it. You can very quickly look uh, at multiple layers, say, in a comp. Like if I have this split screen comp here, I can just hover the skimmer over whichever layer I want to look at and I can see what's going on on each of those layers. I no longer have to go, you know, travel over to the far uh, left side of the timeline and play with a bunch of buttons. It's also great here in the inspector for your production audio because if I open this up I can see my individual audio channels and if I move the skimmer over those and hit play it'll do the same thing with those audio tracks. I can listen to what's going on on individual mics uh, very quickly. And I will just say that if there's one thing in Final Cut that I felt like took me the longest to sort of feel like I had a good grasp of, it's the skimmer for some reason. So screw around with it, be patient with it and yourself, and uh, maybe, you know, hopefully figure out what works for you. Let us know what you love or maybe hate uh, about it in the comments below, and be sure to check out the links in the description for additional resources. Oh, and one more thing I wanted to point out is that none of the footage in this project uh, that I've been showing here is kept on locally attached storage. Uh, it's all on PostLab Drive in the cloud, and some of you maybe have heard about it, some not, perhaps, but I've been messing around with it, and uh, so far I think it's an incredibly useful tool. 
Um, it's really cool. It's it's a little like having an, like an avid nexus in the cloud. The performance I get uh, with it so far is like nearly indistinguishable from a local drive. It's really incredible. I can't hardly believe it works. So very exciting for the prospects of uh, future remote work. Anyway, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.